Hi there everyone, Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks and I'm happy to say that this project is now complete and ready for the water. We're going to see if we can get it in the pond, uh, show you how it performed. But before we do that, I'm going to give you a general overview of the boat and show you how it works. Well, this is a 196 scale Seawolf class submarine put out by Thor Design. And uh, it's a beautiful epoxy hull. We've got a shrouded pump jet uh, for propulsion in the back. It gives this thing tremendous thrust. It's a beautiful kit. I'm going to show you how the internal workings of this boat go together. All right, let's get started. So this is uh, and a three and a half inch diameter dive module put out by OTW. Um, I carry these units in stock at all times. They're a gorgeous cylinder. And this particular unit with the five inch ballast tank is the perfect size for this Seawolf model. What we're looking at uh, in here, starting from the back and moving our way forward, we've got uh, two linkage outputs and our main drive shaft output drive motor. We've got two servos for pitch and rudder control. We have our receiver, an automatic pitch controller, main pressure ballast tank. So this particular system utilizes a uh, water pump to pump water in here, compresses the air, and you've got automatic shutoff at both the full and empty points. It's a beautiful system. We've got our solenoid for our ballast system, our main pump for our ballast system. I've got a forward servo set up in here for the forward dive planes. And I have an automatic, uh, or sorry, a remote on off switch that allows you to turn the model on and off with a remote key fob. We've got a 15 amp uh, fuse in there. And then our main dive controller that handles all of the dive functions of the boat. So to put this unit in place is actually very simple. You can see I've got some bulkheads in place and in the back we've got two rings set up and those go over these knurled nuts in the back of the module. There's two of them right there. Removing all three allows you to have access to the interior of the cylinder. So put this in place, you simply drop it into these cradles and that's set up for the specific diameter of the watertight cylinder and then you slide it backwards, slide that shaft over the drive shaft and then these magnetic linkages, they click right in place automatically. They mate up with their uh, mate on the back unit there. To secure it in place, there is a um, bulkhead on the front here. It's a separate piece, slips over the front two and then there's a stainless steel bolt that goes in place right in the middle there and that gets screwed down just like this. So that done, this cylinder is now completely locked in place. I can pick the entire model up from the cylinder. This is a uh, custom battery enclosure. And the main drive battery is a four amp hour lithium polymer, 11.1 .1 volt battery. Um, we've got a piece of Velcro in here that slips underneath the holder in the bow section, just like that. And then the drive section, or sorry, the battery section uh, has a tab that fits in the slot in the bottom. It rests just like that. And then we just use this Velcro to hold it securely in place. We connect our waterproof battery connectors. Tuck that out of the way to make sure that it doesn't get bound up with our forward dive plane linkage. And basically, we are all ready to go at this point. I'll go get the radio, we'll turn it on, and we'll test some functionality. All right, so this is the uh, radio. This is a Futaba uh, T9CAP computerized radio. Uh, so it's actually a nine-channel 
radio and there's an eight channel receiver inside. So there's lots of additional functionality that's available for the owner of this model. I'm gonna power on our transmitter. I've got it set up, uh, labeled for a Seawolf model. It's gonna set my transmitter in the back there and you can see I've got my remote key fob that's attached to it. Um, you, I'll take this off so you can see it. So this is the, uh, the main key fob that turns the model on and off. So battery power is hooked up, transmitter is turned on, I'll hit the button. And now we have power. So we can test the uh, individual functions of the model. As you could hear, the main throttle was engaged. I can test that forward and reverse. True test of a good set of linkages and a good set of uh, drive is to be able to engage your throttle and have exceptionally low RPM um, and still maintain control and no vibration. So that's certainly the case right now. Um, you can test our rudder control, port and starboard. I'll put that down a little bit so you can see. Main rudder control and then pitch control. Now pitch control is actually occurring uh, at the front servo the rears are completely autonomous. They run off of the pitch controller and there's no input for those, although you can actually control those um, via this switch at full up and full down if you want to override it for whatever reason. Main ballast control is on uh, channel six. That's this uh, switch right here. You got surface and submerge. You can hear the pump kicking in there. Don't like to run it without uh, it being in the water. So that's the main functionality uh, of the model. Basically at this point we can put our upper deck on. And you heard a little bit of a click there. That was actually the magnetic linkages for the forward dive planes engaging. If we take a look at those, and we'll zoom in a little bit here. As we dive the boat, you can see that functionality working. So there's no mechanical linkages to engage or disengage. It's all magnetic. As you take the upper hull off, the magnets disengage with no damage to the linkages. So I'm going to turn the model off. So the unit's turned off now. Nothing going on with that. We'll turn our radio off. And we are now ready to transport to the pond. Why don't we run out to the pond, we'll throw this thing in the water and we'll see what it does. Well, apparently I should have checked the weather forecast because when I went to go open the garage door, we ended up with something like this. Um, we got some rainage going on there right now. So we may have to put testing on hold for a little bit. We'll see if it clears up in the next hour or so. Well, as you can tell, the uh, prognosis is not looking good for testing today. We got a typical Florida afternoon thunderstorm going on right now. I don't think it's very conducive to a very effective testing of our submarine. So unfortunately we're going to have to hold off and uh, we are going to be doing the testing at another date. Very typical for these boats to pull air. When they're in full surface trim. I'm going to uh, drop the boat down with the ballast system, get it a little bit lower. There we go. A little bit more throttle.
much better turning now that we've got most of that rudder in the water there. But it's still a good, I'd say 20 foot diameter circle that it would be describing. So just back from the pond, uh, you can see that the model's still uh, wet from being in the water. Um, overall impressions, it's, it's a typical performer for a modern nuclear boat. Terrible turning radius, uh, particularly in full surface trim. Once you get it under though, it's not too bad. Um, handles really well in terms of pitch control. It's a fast model. This propulsor and this propulsion setup uh, gets it up and gets it moving really quickly. It's a gorgeous model, looks great on and under the water. Overall, I'm really impressed with it. So that's gonna wrap up this build. I'm gonna package it up, send it off to the uh, owner, and we're gonna move on to the next thing. So thanks for joining me. We'll catch you next time. Any questions, comments, or concerns, you can email me at any time at bob at rc-sub.com. Don't forget to, survive, to subscribe. Check out my website when you have a chance, www.nautilusdrydocks.com. Thank you very much, we'll catch you next time.